Hello, this is Danny Bly from the College of Integrated Chinese Medicine and I'm looking at lung syndromes in a nutshell. This is for acupuncture and Chinese medicine students only. Please pause and read this. So we'll look at three deficient lung syndromes. We'll look at three wind invasions. And we'll look at two types of phlegm. Here we go. So first, the functions of the lung in Chinese medicine are to govern qi and respiration, to control the channels and blood vessels, control the dispersing and descending of qi and body fluids, regulate the water passages, dominate the skin and hair, open into the nose, and to house the corporeal soul, the po. If the lung qi is weak, this is going to affect the zong qi, the gathering or ancestral qi, and the wei qi. So if the zong qi is weak, the chest is weak, so there will be shortness of breath, tiredness, weak voice, dislike of speaking, and there may be a stooped posture. The wei qi flows at the surface and it protects us, controls our sweating and regulates our temperature. So if it's weak, we can easily catch colds, get spontaneous daytime sweating and a dislike of cold. Because the lungs control the descending and dispersing of qi and body, body fluids, if the lung qi is weak, the qi doesn't descend and there's a mild cough, and the fluids don't descend and there's watery sputum. We might also get inappropriate grief. Now the lungs are the most yang of the yin organs. They open onto the surface, they resonate with the skin. And because of this, there is no yang, lung yang deficiency. Lung qi deficiency is lung yang deficiency. So we can feel cold and have a pale white complexion. So that's lung qi deficiency. So the key symptoms are a slight shortness of breath, a weak voice, and easily catching colds. So the lungs are also really important in terms of the body fluids, especially the thin gin body fluids. So the lungs control the dispersing and descending of body fluids, they regulate the water passages and they dominate the skin and the hair. So if the lungs are dry, we can get dry mouth and throat, thirst and a hoarse voice, especially if stomach yin shu is also involved. If the qi isn't descending, we can get a cough, in this case a dry cough, and we can get dry skin and hair and even the nose. So the key symptom here is a dry cough. Now if the lung dryness becomes deeper and becomes lung yin deficiency, a few things change. As well as empty, the pulse becomes floating empty and rapid, and the tongue becomes red peeled and possibly cracked in the lung area. The dry cough can develop a bit of scanty sputum, which is difficult to get out. If the yin is deficient, we see a relative excess of yang and we see this as empty heat. So male are flush, night sweats, five palm heat and afternoon or evening heat. And if the yin is deficient, the zong qi can become deficient. So again, we can have a weak voice and dislike of speaking. So our key symptoms here are dry mouth and throat, a dry cough with scanty sputum and afternoon or evening heat. So treatment principles for lung qi deficiency, we tonify the lung qi and warm the yang. For lung dryness, we moisten the lungs and nourish the body fluids. And for lung yin deficiency, we nourish the lung yin and we clear empty heat. And hopefully that should be obvious why now. So wind is a yang pathogenic factor. It's the spearhead of diseases. It usually takes other pathogens with it. It has a sudden um, and changeable nature and it has an upward and outward direction which disrupts the um, lungs descending and dispersing functions. So wind obstructs the wei qi causing aversion to wind and cold. There may be a fever if the pathogen is strong body aches and a headache which is often in the occiput where the bladder channel runs. The lungs descending and dispersing gets blocked so the lung qi rebels upwards so we get sneezing, cough, stuffy or runny nose with clear watery mucus because of the cold. This might also give slight breathlessness and remember that the lungs open into the nose 
and the sinuses. And the pulse is floating because of the wind invasion and tight because of the cold. Now if we get an invasion by wind heat, the still aversion to cold but the fever tends to be more predominant. So still simultaneous fever and chills, but in this case, the fever tends to be more predominant. The headache tends to affect the whole head. The mucus becomes yellow. Heat dries up the body fluids. And we get sore throat, swollen tonsils and thirst. And the heat leads to slight sweating. The pulse is still floating for the wind, but becomes rapid instead of tight and the tongue can become red on the sides and the tip. If the invasion is by wind dampness, then the damp gets into the muscles and gives us a heavy body. It obstructs the rising of the pure yang, giving, to a, uh, giving a muzzy head. We get profuse, clear or white, sticky mucus and a stuffy chest. And it can hinder the spleen's transforming and trans Sporting functions and give you poor appetite, loose stools, bloating abdomen, or mucus in the stools. Pulse becomes floating and slippery, and the tongue coat becomes thick, sticky, and white. So, lots of similar symptoms with wind cold, wind heat, and wind damp. They each have their own flavour, and they're all acute invasions, they're all sudden bugs. So we treat them all by releasing the exterior, creating a sweat, stimulating the lungs, descending and dispersing function. And we either expel the cold, clear the heat, or resolve the damp as is needed. So key symptoms, aversion to wind or cold and sneezing is wind cold. Fever, aversion to cold and a sore throat is wind heat. An aversion to cold, sneezing and a feeling of heaviness in the body is wind damp. There are lots of different flavours of phlegm. Cold phlegm tends to be white, dilute and watery and underlying yang deficiency. Damp phlegm tends to be profuse, white, thick, sticky and stringy and there's usually spleen chi deficiency underlying. Phlegm heat tends to be thick, sticky, yellow, green phlegm. And there can either be spleen deficiency or heat underlying it. Phlegm fluids tend to be very profuse, watery, frothy and white. And there tends to be a yang deficiency underlying it. And dry phlegm gives you difficult and scanty yellow phlegm. And there tends to be yin deficiency or dryness underlying it. The two that you need to learn are damp phlegm, which gives you chronic coughing and bouts. And the cough is loud. The phlegm is loose. Sputum's Profuse, white and easy. It can be phlegm in the throat, stuffy chest, feeling clogged up, shortness of breath, asthma or wheezing, a dislike of lying down where the phlegm collects and being snotty and catarrhy. The bold symptoms are the, are the key symptoms. Pulse is slippery or weak floating fine if there's a big deficiency and the tongue coat thick, sticky, white with a swollen body. With phlegm heat, the cough is barking and chesty. The phlegm is sticky, yellow, green or dark, and it can be foul smelling. There can be phlegm in the throat, a stuffy chest, shorts of breath, asthma and wheezing, as with the damp phlegm. You can also, from the heat, have insomnia and agitation. You can get a muzzy or heavy head, the heat takes the phlegm up into the head or dizziness. A feeling of heat first and if it's acute a fever because of the heat and the pulse is slippery but also rapid and full and the tongue coat is thick sticky and this time yellow with a red tongue coat. Here we have a comparison of wind cold and wind heat. Pause it if you want to have a look with wind dampness symptoms. So to review that Deficient syndromes, we have lung qi deficiency, lung dryness and lung yin deficiency with lung dryness becoming yin deficiency if it becomes severe. We have an invasion of the lung by wind cold, wind heat or wind damp. These are full conditions and we have damp phlegm 
or phlegm heat obstructing the lungs. And these are also full conditions.